Welcome to our YouTube channel. This is Ernest coming to you from MathLab Tutorials in Toronto, Canada. Although seemingly impossible, like many other contributors on YouTube, our mission is to transform some of that destructive hate energy into constructive love energy for a subject that is so deserving. Mathematics is part of all that surrounds us. Just pause for a moment and take a good look. As your screen suggests, like it or not, math really did take us from the Stone Age to the Space Age. The sermon is over, and now let's get down to some serious math. This is video two of the continuing series on linear relations. Uh, before we proceed, let's recap um, the various concepts that were talked about in uh, video one. Uh, you'll recall in video one, we learned how to set up a Cartesian grid or a Cartesian system and how to graduate the axes and then how to locate points. Uh, we discussed about the straight line segment between two points, P1 and P2, in the XY plane. We also talked about the run and the horizontal midpoint and we talked about the rise and the vertical midpoint, and then we assembled the horizontal and vertical midpoints to produce the actual midpoint between the two points, P1 and P2. And then we discussed how the slope by definition is the rise over the run. So the slope is actually a ratio. We call it rise over run. Alternatively, we can call it delta y over delta x, the difference in y values over the difference in x values as we proceed from P1 to P2. Uh, the, we, did, we talked about uh, the midpoint formula, which is essentially the average of the x values and the average of the y values in going from P1 to P2. And also we talked about the distance between P1 and P2 as given by the Pythagorean theorem. Um, further to that, we mentioned about the x and y intercepts of the line. Those are where the line cuts the coordinate axes. And then finally, we talked a little bit about the equation of a line and how it describes uh, the linear relationship between x and y at any point along the line. We next talk about the type equation slope triangle that I've devised to help you remember uh, certain characteristics of lines. Uh, if we consider this line segment here, think about this point as P1, P2, and we can talk about the type of line it is, the equation of that line, and what sort of slope it has. Okay, in going from, if we pick any two points along that line segment, there it is, we have a positive run and a positive rise, so that the slope is positive. And we conclude that the slope here is greater than zero. And I call it a slanted line. And because it's like a forward slash on your keyboard, it looks like so. So a positive slope will always look like a forward slash on your keyboard, and I call it a slanted line. Uh, let's go on to this other side over here. If we take any two points on this line, we'll go like so. And if we proceed from this point to that point, we have a negative rise and a positive run. So a negative rise and a positive run. And therefore, the slope, which is rise over run, is certainly negative. And we write down a negative sign inside the box. So m is less than 0. The equation takes on the form y equals mx plus b because it's a slanted line. And again, sl means slanted line. But it will look like a backslash because the slope is negative. Uh, next, we have two special cases. Let's look at this case right here. This is a horizontal line, obviously. Now, if we pick two points along this horizontal line, and there are the two points like so, as we go from P1 to P2 along that horizontal line, 
We do have a run, but we have no rise. We have a run with no rise. So the slope would be zero over the run. Rise over run is zero over the run. As zero over a non-zero run is obviously zero. So we conclude that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. And we write down slope m equals zero. Uh, let's look at the equation for a horizontal line. If this is P1 and this is P2 out here, as we proceed from P1 to P2, you'll notice the x values change, but the y values do not change. And therefore, the y value is constant. So in going from P1 to P2, the x values do change, but the y values do not change. So the equation of that of a horizontal line is y equals constant. And the constant I've used is just a. Okay, so a just stands for constant, and the equation becomes y equals a. Okay, uh, over here, hl means horizontal line, and I drew a little horizontal line there. And so a horizontal line has zero slope, and the equation takes on the form y equals constant, or y equals a. Let's look at a vertical line, like like so. This is a vertical line segment. As we proceed, let's call that P1, let's call that P2. As we go from P1 to P2, there's no run, but there's a finite rise. There's no run, but there's a finite rise. For example, the rise might be like two units, and the run is zero. Therefore, rise over run would be like two over zero. But two over zero is undefined. We say it does not exist. Uh, in fact, 2 divided by a positive little bit, like plus 0, will actually give you a slope of positive infinity. And 2 divided by minus a little bit will give you a slope of negative infinity. Because rise over run would be 2 over minus a little bit will give you minus infinity. And 2 over plus a little bit will give you positive infinity. So um, to conclude then, for a vertical line, VL stands for vertical line. I drew a little vertical line here. The slope is either plus or minus infinity, uh, depending on the approach. At any rate, we say that the slope does not exist. So DNE means does not exist. Or another word for does not exist is undefined. So to recap, when we have a vertical line like so, the slope is certainly undefined. It, we say that it's infinitely steep. Now the equation of a vertical line, as I proceed from P1 to P2, notice the y values change, but the x value does not. Again, proceeding from P1 to P2, the y values change, but the x values does, do not. Therefore, x equals constant, or x equals a describes the equation of a vertical line. Okay, so x equals a is a vertical line, special case. y equals a, horizontal line, special case. Horizontal line, zero slope, vertical line, slope is undefined or does not exist or approaches plus or minus infinity. Okay, so now these are, uh, so to recap, for a forward slash, we have a positive slope. The equation takes on the form y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, y is, uh, b is the y-intercept. Uh, in the case of a forward slash, uh, we have a negative slope. The y values are decreasing. And um, again, m is the slope here, and b is the y-intercept. Uh, for a horizontal line, uh, the slope is zero, and y equals a is the equation of a horizontal line. For a vertical line, the slope is either plus or minus infinity, or we say the slope is undefined or does not exist, and the equation takes on the form x equals a, or x equals constant. I put up the clock over here because the clock uh, is very useful in talking about slopes and angles and so forth and so on. Picture the center of the clock as being the origin, and then, of course, we have the hours around the clock. Uh, the line joining 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock would have zero slope. It's a horizontal line. Okay. The line joining 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock 
is a horizontal line. It would have zero slope, and the equation would be of the form y equals b, or y equals a. Sorry, I used y equals a. Again, going from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock, that would be a horizontal line. The, uh, the slope would be zero, and the equation of that line would be of the form y equals a. Uh, let's look at vertical lines. For example, joining 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we have a vertical line. The slope is undefined, and the equation would take on the form x equals a. Similarly, on the left, if we join up 7 o'clock, 11 o'clock, we have a vertical line. Uh, the slope is undefined, and the equation would be of the form x equals a again. For example, if we look at the line going from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock, we notice it looks like a forward slash, so it has a positive slope. And uh, the equation would be of the form y equals mx plus b. Likewise, if we look at the line joining 10 o'clock, 4 o'clock, it looks like a backslash, so it would have a negative slope. And uh, again, it's a slanted line, so the equation would be of the form y equals mx plus b. So this serves as a good summary, this type equation slope triangle. Uh, you should refer to it often until you become so familiar with uh, uh, linear relations that you have this already ingrained in your mind and uh, you won't need it anymore. But for the time being, I would encourage you to uh, go back to this slide periodically to make sure that you understand what's going on. In this slide, we talk uh, about the slope formula. We mentioned about slope. We talked about slope in video one. And uh, we'll put it into a more concrete form in uh, this video. If you pick any two points, P1, P2, in the Cartesian plane, then this reads the slope of P1, P2. We designate the slope between two points using the letter M. Little m will often mean slope. And it will be rise divided by run. If we try to keep the run positive all the time, it doesn't necessarily have to be positive but I like to keep the run positive all the time and then see whether the y values are rising or whether they're dropping. If the y values are rising, then we have a positive slope. If the y values are dropping, then we have a negative slope. Okay, in any event, the rise is delta y, the run is delta x. You'll recall that delta means difference, so this means difference in y values over difference in x values which would be y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. You'll notice over here, this is the standard slope formula. If I were to multiply top and bottom by negative 1 and rearrange, this would also read as y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter how you subtract the y values, how you subtract the x values. Uh, as long as uh, you're going you're you're going two one two one or one two one two, okay? It's quite irrelevant how you do it. Uh, that's essentially saying that uh, the points P one and P two are interchangeable, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like y y y two minus y one over x two minus x one. It can certainly be y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, and you can easily see that by multiplying the slope formula over here by negative 1 over negative 1 and distributing the minus 1 on top and the minus 1 on the bottom. Okay, but if we come down here, we see the slope formula in a slightly different layout than this. I really went overboard over here using brackets because I know that people make sign errors. They forget their bed mass rules, and to avoid that sort of thing from happening, which will yield uh, incorrect slopes, I use a lot of brackets. I use a set of square brackets on top, followed by round brackets inside, square brackets on the bottom, round brackets inside. And then essentially all you have to do is drop the coordinates inside the round brackets, drop the coordinates inside the round brackets, 
and then you can easily go to your calculator all in one shot and make sure you use all the brackets on your calculator if you do that. Essentially, the bed mass has already been done for you because the brackets are all in place and therefore you won't make any errors if you use this layout right here. Um, well, we call that equation 1 and that indicates that uh, that's the slope between P1 and P2. And over here, the slope, again referring to the clock. If uh, the center of the clock is the origin, and we draw a line segment from the origin, we'll call the origin zero. If we draw a line segment from zero to three o'clock, that will be a horizontal line, and the slope is zero. If we draw a line segment from O to two o'clock, that will be a forward slash, so the slope is positive. If I draw a line segment from O to say the 1201 mark, which is right around here somewhere. We have a very, very steep forward slash, so the slope is positive infinity. Okay, and this indicates what's going on over here. That points in the two o'clock direction, that points towards 12 o'clock on the right. Uh, again, three o'clock is zero because we have a horizontal line and we know the slope of a horizontal line is zero. If we uh, draw the segment going from 0 to 4 o'clock, it's a backslash, so we know the slope is negative, and it looks like a backslash like so. Uh, if we go to the 559 mark, 559 is roughly over here. We're almost at 6 o'clock. Then we have a very steep backslash, which turns out to be a negative... Uh, like a slope of essentially minus infinity or a very large negative slope. Okay, so just remember that 12 double dot 01 uh, represents a positive large slope. Two o'clock position would be like a moderate slope. Um, it would be a positive slope. Three o'clock would have a zero slope. Four o'clock would have a moderate negative slope. And of course, uh, 559 would have a large negative slope. Uh, I might as well talk about this now. The slope at the 130 position, if I join up the origin with the 130 position, that will be exactly a slope of positive 1. If I join up the origin with the 430 position, that will be exactly a slope of negative 1. Okay, so the clock comes in really handy when we're talking about slopes. And later on, when we talk about trigonometry, I will use the clock extensively to um, essentially do uh, trigonometry on the clock. In this slide, we discuss uh, the midpoint formula. We write down mid, M-I-D, uh, P1, P2 stands for the midpoint between P1 and P2. We'll designate that point capital M. Uh, you reserve little m for slope, use capital M for midpoint so that you don't get all confused. And you'll recall that the midpoint is just the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates, xavg X and yavg. Of course, to average two numbers, you just add, divide by two, add, divide by two, and that constitutes the midpoint formula. So to summarize, the midpoint between P1 and P2, we give it the letter M, and these are the coordinates of M. Okay, the average of the X values, the average of the Y values. And I call that equation two, and that's the midpoint between P1 and P2. Now we talk about the distance formula. You recall the distance formula was given by PT, the Pythagorean theorem, which says that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Uh, you can think about A as being the run, and B, B as being the rise, and C as being the distance between the two points, P1 and P2. Okay, so uh, instead of writing C squared, I write down D squared for distance squared is equal to delta X squared, that's the run squared, plus the rise squared. So this is just a statement of the Pythagorean theorem for right-angled triangles. Um uh, 
alternatively, uh, because you know that delta x is x2 minus x1, and delta y is y2 minus y1, we can say that d squared equals bracket x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Again, the order over here, because you're squaring, the order is irrelevant. You could write x1 minus x2 squared, and you'll get the same thing. y1 minus y2 squared, and you'll get the same thing. Because the squaring process uh, says that the order of the subtraction over here is irrelevant to the distance. Okay, so uh, D will designate the distance between P1 and P2. And we'll go on to the next slide. Uh, in this slide, we begin to discuss uh, the various different forms of the equations of lines. And you'll recall that the equation of a line, or any other curve for that matter, uh, is a complete description of, or will contain a complete description of all the characteristics of that line or that curve, if we're talking about curves instead of straight lines. Uh, I have HL. You'll recall HL means horizontal line. VL means vertical line. And I filled in the columns in the next slide. Uh, SL means slanted line. So we either have a forward slash or a backslash and call P1 any point uh, on the line. It has coordinates x1, y1. Uh, you'll have to excuse that. That should read y1. So I'll leave it for you to <laughs> wipe that out and put in a y1 in there. I'll have to make a correction to that. Anyway, that, that, uh, that, uh, that's any point on the line L. Okay, so that should read P1 with coordinates x1, y1 and that will be any point on the line. Uh, the first and most popular equation is SIF, which is a slope-intercept form. It's of the form y equals m dot x plus b. Again, x and y are the Cartesian variables, and m and b are parameters, and m is called the slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and uh, the value of b is actually the y-intercept. Um, how do we get the y-intercept? We set x equal to 0, correct? When x is equal to 0 in the equation over here, you get y equals b, and that's why b is called the y-intercept. Now, if we have a point p1, uh, we can easily substitute in x1, y1 into this equation right here, because, because the point P1 lies on this line described by the SIF, it will, the coordinates will definitely satisfy the equation of the line. So if we replace Y by Y1, replace X by X1, solve for B, we can get this nice little formula over here for the Y-intercept. Okay, so all you do is take the Y1 from here, that used to be a Y1, take the slope from here, plug it in there, and take the x1 from here and plug it in there. When you crank this out, that will that's like a little automatic formula that will give you the uh, value of the y-intercept. Uh, you'll recall from the last slide that the first column over here uh, represents the um, information for horizontal lines. Uh, this represents information for uh, vertical lines, and the third column is information for the uh, slanted lines. So under horizontal lines, you'll recall that y equals a or y equals constant is the equation of a horizontal line, and of course the slope is zero. And for vertical lines, x equals a or x equals constant is the equation of a vertical line, and the slope is plus or minus infinity, which we say does not exist or is undefined. Uh, the y-intercept is equal to a, because if the equation is y equals a, then necessarily the y-intercept has to be a. Uh, over here, if uh, the equation is x equals a, then certainly the x-intercept has to be a as well. Recall that the y-intercept is where the horizontal line cuts the uh, y-axis, 
and over here the x-intercept is where the vertical line cuts the x-axis. If we go back over here to the slanted lines, uh, the x-intercept, uh, it's easy to find the x-intercept. Uh, all we do is set y equal to 0 and solve for x. When we do that, we get the x-intercept is minus b over m. That's provided m is not equal to 0. But m is not equal to 0 because we're under the slanted line column. And if we're under the slanted line column, there's no way that m is equal to 0 because m equals 0 corresponds to horizontal lines. So the x-intercept is given by minus b over m. That's where the line crosses the x-axis. And the y-intercept is given by b. And that's where the line crosses the y-axis. Um, there's another form for the equation of a line. Uh, it's uh, point-slope form. Point-slope form. And it reads like this. y is equal to m bracket x minus x1 plus y1. M, again, is the slope, y2 minus y1, all over x2 minus x1. And uh, the point x1, y1 is just any point on the line. Okay, so uh, to actually see that this actually works, replace the y, the y by y1, replace the x1, or the x by x1. You get x1 minus x1 is 0 over here. M times 0 is 0, and you get y1 is equal to y1. So this is another form, the, uh, an alternative form to y equals mx plus b, called the point-slope form. And again, another form is called standard form. And it takes on the form a dot x plus b dot y plus c is equal to 0. Because we have 0 on the right-hand side, we denote that to be standard form. Um, many textbooks require that a b and c be integers and therefore if these are fractions you need to clear the fractions to produce integers here and also they require that a is greater than zero okay that's just a convention the most textbooks use the require that a b and c are all integers and specifically a should be greater than zero and that will comprise the standard form of a straight line. Um, uh, we can easily solve this equation over here for y. When we solve for y, we identify the slope as minus a over b. And to find the x-intercept, we put y equal to 0, solve for x. When you do that, you get the x-intercept is minus c over a. And again, that's where the line crosses the x-axis. Uh, to find the y-intercept, you set x equal to 0, solve for y, and you get y int equals minus c over b, where l crosses the y-axis. That's where the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. Thanks to all for viewing this video. Stay tuned for many more videos to come. If you liked the video, please give us a like, submit comments, and subscribe to our channel. If not, please tell us how to improve it. Over and out from Ernest at MathLab Tutorials in Toronto.